I'm Ralph White, and uh, I live right here in New York City, and I'm co-founder of the New York Open Center, which has been New York's leading center of holistic learning and world culture for the last 30 years. And uh, I'm somebody who is very involved in the whole movement to create a more holistic, a more ecological, a more conscious society. You know, I'm somebody who grew up without a strong sense of meaning or spirituality in life, but was on a search, looking for something deeper, some kind. I could sense that our society was adrift, it was imbalanced, it was not producing either happiness or well-being or ecological sustainability. Um, but what could the alternative be? So what I do is my effort to really answer that question. It came out of many years of traveling. Open Center is a year-round, 52-week, seven days a week, set of programs, workshops, courses, webinars, conferences, performances, trainings. In where can we work to transform our culture? Where is their greater, greatest receptivity? The Open Center does the work of um, cultural evolution rather than political revolution, although there's certainly a crossover between the two. And you can say that in the 30 years that we've been going, it's amazing the way holistic and ecological ideas have permeated the culture increasingly so that now they're barely considered uh, outside the mainstream, not all the way, but... Uh, Whereas 30 years ago, everything from uh, natural foods to uh, integrative medicine was considered snake oil and nonsense. It's open to the general public. We probably had about 300,000 people who've come through since we started. It's a pretty broad demographic. It's a, a lot of women, and women with graduate degrees would perhaps be the typical uh, attendee, but it's fully eclectic. And because we're in the city, we have a more multi-ethnic, multicultural audience, which is really important to us. We're not a retreat center. It's been said that many holistic centers are retreat centers. We're not. Others have said we're an advanced center. Our goal is to advance the holistic worldview into the heart of the culture. So we work on many things. I'll give you a specific example right now. I'm just pulling together a big conference in the spring on the art of dying, spiritual, scientific, and practical approaches to living and dying. Our culture is awakening to a different, more mature view of death, post-death possibilities, what might happen, how do we prepare, and what do the Tibetan or indigenous traditions have to say about this. What do the Zen people have to say to us about how to be fully present at the deathbed? What can we really learn about this deepest of all questions if we have an open mind? But the Open Center also does increasingly uh, certificates now. We're in process of becoming a school, a state-recognized school, <laughs> after being totally independent of holistic and professional studies. So certificates in positive psychology, the art and science of happiness, well-being, and flourishing, which is very of the moment right now, creating a new certificate in holistic psychology, you might say after humanistic and transpersonal psychology, it's now time for a holistic psychology that actually includes all these elements, the body, the ecosphere, 
the unconscious and all the many things that have been taught in places like the Open Center for the last 30 years. Within the holistic world, there's a great deal of emphasis on Buddhism, on yoga, you might even say on shamanism. But the Western tradition itself has its own beautiful lineage. And much as I honor the Tibetans, I've always felt close to them and the Zen tradition, etc., and the wisdom of the yogic philosophy. I think it's healing and nourishing to connect with our own Western tradition, you know, going back to the library of ancient Alexandria, of which we have only 1% of the books. Uh, up through the Renaissance, the more enlightened periods of the Middle Ages, uh, into more contemporary times, looking at how the flow of wisdom, the deeper wisdom, the sacred wisdom streams have really been part of our culture from the mystery centers of ancient Greece up through Plato and Pythagoras, Alexandria, Sicily, into the Islamic world, Andalusia, where the library of Cordoba had 400,000 books and uh, was a source of illumination when most of Christian Europe was still in pretty retrograde darkness. I've had a life of organizing many events and things, workshops, conferences, trainings, etc., both locally, nationally, and internationally. But one of the ones that is closest to my heart is something we've come to call the Esoteric Quest. I've done, uh, I'm coming up now on the 11th of them over the course of the nice last 20 years. We started them in 1990. So these quests, these esoteric quests, their aim is to restore, to remember the lost or half-forgotten spiritual and cultural history of the West. Often we find that when these traditions, whether it's the Hermetic tradition from Hermes in Alexandria, as above, so below, whether it is the Neoplatonic tradition, also originating in Alexandria, carrying Plato's work into the modern world, that found expression again in Marsilio Ficino's Platonic Academy in the Villa Carreggi outside Florence. So our goal is to bring all of these beautiful elements alive and to put before our participants, to give them a living experience. These are not academic conferences. They are events for the soul and for the imagination to go somewhere, to feel it, to have the deepest learning around it, and to take it into it and make it part of yourself. Just completing now a memoir, it's called The Jeweled Highway on the Quest for a Life of Meaning. I hope it'll be an encouraging story for people, you know, I didn't start out in very promising circumstances. I was born into working class terraced houses in Cardiff, both my parents left school at 13. 
I wound up spending my teenage years in the grimy industrial north of England. There was nothing holistic and spiritual about that. Swinging London and Sussex University, Chicago, Californian counterculture, hitchhiking to Machu Picchu, living in the early alternative echo villages and spiritual communities in places like the north of Scotland, starting off places like Omega Institute at its own location in uh, the Hudson River Valley. It's a major institute for holistic studies that has thousands of people now coming from uh, all over Eastern America. And then beginning the New York Open Center from scratch, it was an intense period. I call it in the book, Building the Centers of the New Culture. Um, but I followed whatever it is, you, you know, you, whatever term you care to give it, followed my heart. I didn't really have much choice. I just was, I don't know what's the right word, gu guided is the wrong word, driven is the wrong word. I just, I really had to listen to nothing else would give me satisfaction other than to listen to the promptings that arose within me about what gave me life, vitality, joy. So I, I'm hoping that this will really give people some hope and inspiration. Listen, if this guy can, um, you know, make some kind of contribution to the culture and see a way to point the world or the part of the world that he can touch in a more beneficial direction and have some success in doing it, then, you know, anybody can do it, you know. But now it's time for me to be, to live a more uh, free life, um, working more as a speaker and a writer. I'm doing radio, I have a radio show as well. So for me, it's looking for, okay, where else can I contribute? I'm still working on those esoteric quests, those art of dyings, these deep certificates in uh, various aspects of psychology. So uh, yes, I enjoy keeping that going. I'm not going to cut my ties to that. But it's time for a more expansive life in which I'm speaking more of my personal voice rather than speaking from the point of view of an institution.